Hello, I'm Kurt Owen. This is my wife, Terry. And we've been talking about this whole deal about people saying we live in uncertain times and about how that is just absolute hogwash. And the fact that uh, you had brought up that it's heartbreaking, especially for God's kids, mm -hmm. right? It is. And um, especially when it's completely contrary to who he is, right? God is not uncertain. He's extremely certain. Right. Right. And, and the thing is, if you're in that place and you're saying those words, we're not trying to criticize you. We're trying to encourage you to put your heart into receiving everything that the Word of God has. The Word says that we receive with meekness the implanted Word which is able to save our souls, our mind, our will, our emotions. So that while everybody's calling these uncertain times, what they mean by that is that we're frantic. We don't know. We're, it's just unpredictable. We're scared. Never know to, what tomorrow will bring. And <clears throat> so we just want to address that according to the Word because the Word is our future. It is our, our present. And it is our security. And something you pointed out in an earlier broadcast, we're not talking about the world that's saying this. No. We're talking about Christians. Right. And, you know, when I say it's hogwash, I, I want to be clear. I, if this is what you've been thinking, I need you to know it's hogwash. Right. Because that's not, <clears throat> that's not true. Mm -hmm. And I want to provoke you to find out what the truth is or at least deal within your own self. You know, anytime I get to the place that I'm uncertain about what comes next. I know I have to deal with it, mm -hmm. right? I have to, boy, you better get back to where you are certain, right? right? You've got to get back to, you got to get back to what God said. And, you know, one of the things that we've talked about is, um, in fact, we addressed this at a couple of the churches, is people say this stuff about your life shall hang in doubt before you and you mm -hmm. shall have, you know, well, right. That I'm quoting quite, the scripture. They don't yeah. quite quote the scripture. They, this is what, what they say. Saying. Sorry, I'm quoting the scripture. They say, well, you, you, ne you are not promised tomorrow. You never know what life is going to bring, you know, and um, they twist some scriptures right. up and stuff. But there's a couple of important things, and you actually t address this in your blog post mm -hmm. that was excellent. We'll try to put it up on the Kurt Owen Ministries page, but it is on your Facebook Person, page, right? Yeah. It's Personal a, Facebook I'm page. Not public, but yeah. Yeah, um, on her Facebook pages. But let's uh, let's just. There's something that people don't realize, and I started to bring it out. But go ahead. And so in Deuteronomy 28:66, it says, "Your life shall hang in doubt before you." Now, now let's be clear. Let's kind of give a back history of Deuteronomy 28. The first 14, this is the blessing and the curse of the covenant, right? right? The first 14 verses are the blessing. After that, uh, the Lord begins to basically line out, uh, to, to go verse by verse. The curse of disobedience. Yeah, and the curse of the law, mm -hmm. the curse that is operating in the earth. And so when she's about to read this, understand that he, she's addressing the curse of the law, mm -hmm. the curse for not being in relationship with God. But go ahead. Right. Your life shall hang in doubt before you. You shall fear day and night and have no assurance of life. That pretty much sums up the way that people are. That sums it up. This is, this is what we're seeing all over, everywhere. And, and the thing is, the more that you're around people who are anxious or focusing on, today it's COVID-19, it used to be right. H1N1, it used to be swine flu, it used to be bird flu. It used, well, I mean, and it, it could be the economy. It, it could be, be yeah. anything. Mm -hmm. And so, so there's, this, there's this fear, and it's like people are feeding off of each other. You can go right. into the grocery store or in a Walmart, and you get around these people. We had an experience when we were walking into right. the store not, right. not long ago, and... and um, my husband's a perfect gentleman, so he's trying to let this young girl go in the store, and she's got a face mask on, and gloves, and, and, gloves, and she, so she's geared up, and he says, after you, ma'am, and she looked at him like he was a serial a, killer. Serial killer. I yeah, mean, it was, his it eyes was, it was like, wild. You're crazy, and so I was like, well, I'll go, so, so I walked in, but... Um, but we're seeing that so much in the fear that's gripping people because they have no assurance. And, and part of it's because this, is, this virus is something they right. can't see. Right. So they don't know if they're coming in contact with it. They don't know what. And they have themselves. no assurance of life. No assurance. They are living in fear. Yes. They uh, they do not you know you you never know what tomorrow's going to bring. You better watch out. You know you can die of this thing, 
And yet the scripture says to think that way is under the curse of the law. It is completely contrary to the blessing of God. And it's completely contrary to what Jesus accomplished right. for you. Now we're going to look at Galatians. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Right, what, what Jesus say. accomplished for you. And we just recently celebrated Resurrection Sunday. Right. In Resurrection Sunday, we are celebrating the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And specifically here in Galatians 3.13. Which was a certain event. Not yes. only historically certain, but Jesus told them, I am going to die. I am going to get up. Right. And he predicted it several yeah. times in the yeah. Gospels. But we also know all the prophets. Well, and God had said it, yeah. The prophets had said it all along. And so this was a predictable event. It was very certain, even though the disciples didn't understand it yet. Right. And what, people say, well, you never know what God's going to do. Well, you could have told. Yeah. You could have known for years, right. centuries. Well, there's going to come a Christ. He's going to die. Right. And he's going to be raised from the dead. How do we know that? Because God said it, right. and God is certain. Amen. And there was a perfect picture in Isaiah 53 painted of yes, the crucifixion. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. And so what we see in Galatians 3.13 is Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So the anointed one, the Messiah, and his anointing has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So it's so clear. It's okay, now, so clear. But let, let me kind of, we need to make this clear to the people what exactly we're talking about. If you were operating under the curse, if you were a cursed person, mm -hmm. your life hangs in doubt before you. You have no assurance you have of life. No assurance of life mm -hmm. Right? Um, you don't know what's what's going to happen. You're afraid day and night. Afraid day and night because you never know. I could die tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But if you are a blessed person, if you are a recipient of the blessing of God. Mm -hmm. Now, I know a lot of times people try to trace the blessing back to the garden and all that stuff. I, listen, I'm not into that. I'm into tracing it back to the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. I, I, I'm blessed right. because I know Jesus. Right. I'm blessed because I belong to Jesus. I am blessed because he qualified me for the blessing. But one of the important things that you always point out is that we invoke the blessing with our yes, words. That's right. Yeah. So well, you the scripture can, says that. You can speak against your blessing. Right. And you can you can say basically that you are cursed. Right. And you can be again confined. And God to the will curse. honor and God will honor that because that's another certain part about his character. Right. If that's what you want, I'll give you what you want. I will give you what you want. I'll I will hate every moment, I'll moment of it. Hate every moment of it, but I'll honor your choice. Right. It to, to the point of hell, right? right? That's how people end up in hell. Right. Not because God wants them there, but because they refuse to make it his choice. And, but yet God honors his choice. This whole thing about universalism and about everybody's going to be saved and stuff, you, you actually are saying that God hates you. Mm -hmm. Not, no, no, no. I'm saying love. Nobody that loves would ever send a person to hell. First, God doesn't send anybody to hell. Second, you're saying God doesn't care enough about you to honor your choice that if you don't want him, he's going to make you take him anyway. You don't know God. No. You, you don't know that's him. Not he's not, that's, not, that's not his character. Right. Think about all the times in Scripture. What about going back, going back to that with Adam, right? And, um, we knew and, it was the will of God. Yeah, that he and, have a and I'm talking, actually talking to somebody right now. If, you, if universalism was true, God would have instituted it in the garden. Mm -hmm. He would have said, you know what, Adam? I don't care what choice you've made. I'm not letting mankind go through misery for the next 6,000 years. King's X on that. Forget it. Um, my love is sufficient. I'm undoing your choice. Right. But he didn't. He honored Adam's choice and then had to work around Adam's choice until we got to where we are today. That God will, and this goes back to this, this is absolutely true of you. That it, the curse brings no assurance of life. It is also absolutely true that the blessing brings absolute assurance right. of your life. Christ has redeemed, let's kind of break it down into where it's easier to understand. Let's say it this way. If Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law, you can say it exactly like this. 
Christ has redeemed me from having no assurance of life. Right. Christ has redeemed me from fearing day and night. Right. Christ has redeemed me from uncertainty. That's right. I now have a certainty. People say, well, yeah, but you've got to remember what James said. James says you should not pray, tomorrow you'll do this or tomorrow you'll do that. What is your life? It is even a vapor of smoke. Yeah, but you've got to go back and remember who he was talking to. In that, I think it's the same chapter or just one chapter back, he says, you adulterers and adulteresses, you murder, you covet, you cannot obtain. You, you ask and you do not have, and then you ask, but you ask amiss and just so you can squander it on your own lust. Yeah, if you're an adulterer and adulteress, if you are murdering and you're coveting and you cannot obtain, yeah, you are, you're invoking the curse in your life. Not because you're saying, I choose to serve the devil rather than to serve God. Yes, if that's you, your life hangs in doubt before you. The way that you explain that, though, that's so great, is that God's constantly pouring his blessing mm -hmm. into you, mm -hmm. but you're holding a bucket and you've chopped off the bottom. And right. so even though God's not withholding the blessing from you, you cannot cling to that blessing because you chopped the bottom off your bucket. Yeah, by your own choice. By your choice. Yeah, a lot, another way we like to say it is is that you're sitting there banging your thumb with a hammer expecting God to heal you. It's not going to happen because it eventually, it's not that God would withhold healing. It's you keep smacking your thumb with a hammer. And at some point, the Lord says, he must want his thumb to be that messed up. That's why he keeps smacking it with a hammer. Therefore, I will honor that choice. Why is that? Because God is certain. Same way that he didn't want you to have. I think it's interesting that under the curse, you had the uncertainty of life. But under the blessing, you have certainty of life. Right. We're going to have to pick this up here next time. Uh, remember, Jesus, Jesus is risen and victory is assured. assured.